welcome to the Retro Gaming Vortex and today from the Vortex we have this beauty. This is the Sinclair Spectrum ZX128K plus 2. Bad enough saying that sober, imagine that after a few drinks. Now the, uh, the 128 plus 2 of which this particular one is a B variety, plus 2B, but I'll explain more about that later, is the first Spectrum to be made by Amstrad. Now, why did Amstrad make Spectrums? Well, let me explain. But to find out why this computer was created, we need a little bit of a brief history of time. No, no, not that history of time. How dare you, you absolute bugger? I will tell the bloody queen and steal your tea. Stephen Hawking, I don't care. You're not using this video to promote your wares, okay? G R R R R R R R R R R. I will headbutt you. You can grr or you won't touch me. It's not happening. Anyway, let's get on with it. Right, on the 28th of May 1985, St. Clair announced that they uh, intended to raise between 10 to 15 million pounds for a restructuring of the company. We'll go into the restructuring of this program, but that's another program. But the point is that uh, because the confidence had been lost in the company, uh, they couldn't raise this. But eventually, a company called Amstrad, that we all know, uh, offered them the money and uh, they sold them. Um, the range of computers and the rights to the Spectrum name. They didn't sell them the company, just the brand. And when they took over, the Plus 2 was born. Now, when Amstrad acquired uh, the brand and the computer line, they had the uh, 128K out, which is this one. Now, there were some criticisms of this uh, because of the, the false keyboard. Well, it wasn't a false keyboard, it just wasn't very good. So, what Amstrad did was redesign it to look a bit like their CPC line. And they put a full keyboard on, nice, and uh, an integral tape drive. So you don't have the problems of a separate tape drive. And that's where the shape of the Plus 2 comes from. Now, like the original 128, the Plus 2 comes with a 48K mode and a 128K mode, which can be selected from the main menu, as seen here. Now the difference is, whereas the original 128 had uh, a separate tape drive, it needed a tape test, test option, whereas the new Spectrum has it integrated. So it doesn't need that option, so that went from the menu. But it still retained the calculator option. Now, one interesting little mess up to note is that when uh, Amstrad bought the Plus 2 out, they wanted to change the copyright notice on the screen here. So, to do this, they changed the programming in the BIOS. And um, what they saw at the end of the BIOS programming was some spare bits and bytes. So they decided to, uh, you know, we did use that to improve it and put the message in. Unfortunately, what they didn't realise, because they couldn't get the original BIOS programming, they didn't realise that programmers used those last bits and bytes for their programs. So, this initial release caused a lot of uh, programs, a lot of the early programs, the 48K and the 128K programs, not to work anymore, which caused a lot of problems and was quickly fixed in later releases. The Plus 2 and the Plus 3, which was the disc-based version, which is basically what the Plus 2 is inside, was finally discontinued by Amstrad in 1990. Despite the fact that at the time it still accounted for a third of all home-based computers. So, enough talking about this thing. Let's go up to the games room and have a good look at what this thing actually is. Okay, so what did you get in 1987 when you bought one of these? Although this particular one is a 1990 uh, plus 2B model because it's black and it's much better looking. Mmm, sexy. Yes, I do prefer the black looking one. Well, you got this. You also got a box, but I'm not going to show that because this is not about the box, this is about the computer itself. Now, unlike the 128 that went before it, 
on this one you're getting a nice proper keyboard they've still uh, retained some of the codes for when you're using it in 48k mode but it's a nice proper keyboard although it is if you're a speed typer it is off on the center which is a bit off-putting but other than that it's good and then join straight onto the keyboard mm, nice and efficient is the data coder with this lovely rainbow effect Mm. I could almost do a shatter on there if this was a Commodore. Mmm. 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 Right down here you've got all the usual tape buttons. And uh, uphill, uh, no expense spared, silver lighting, ZX Spectrum plus two. One, two, eight K. Yes, I have the posh one. Sinclair on the back, they but on the left hand side in a nice red writing. On the front, nothing in particular, just a black box. Side, still nothing in particular, black box, bit of a wedge shape there. 80s aerodynamics going on. Mm, yeah. Right, back you get to more interesting. See you've got the ports. You have yourself a nice printer port. PSU for the huge uh, power brick that this thing comes with. Uh, Expansion I.O. never used. A MIDI port. Very nice for today. Uh, auxiliary. An RGB Peritel. So that's another video output. Uh, TV output. And the tape sound. Now I'm assuming that is for an external player. So it can listen to the old tape recorders. Don't know why. They obviously didn't trust this enough to work on its own. So they needed to a spare one, although this one's never let me down, so I can't argue there. But on the other side, we have use only Sinclair S SJS1 joysticks. Nothing like trying to sell you the room brand, is it? So you got joystick two, and one, two ports, and a handy dandy reset button. And that is the close up of the plus two. Right, so we've heard the history of the computer and we've looked at it physically. Now, what toys could I get to play with this thing? Well, of course, there was the ZX printer. Yeah, which have been going for years and was continued with a line of the plus two and the plus three, which was a discharge version. Uh, we've got the ZX1 interface, as seen here, which gave you an 8 kilobyte ROM expansion, an RS232 serial port. Giving, giving you a LAN interface and then you can connect to up to eight of the dreaded micro drives. What micro drives? Well, that's for a future program. You could also require yourself the Kempston joystick interface, even a speech, it's called a micro speech unit, which was a voice synthesis thing, and even drum machines. There was quite a bit you could get for this because it was well supported by third party developers. Now, on the software side, at the last count, there were over 20,000 software titles available for this machine, and that still grows because they still develop for this machine. You can get the usual business stuff, such as word processing, uh, database spreadsheet, all the usual stuff, and the games. If you were interested in seeing more about the software, I found a few videos here from other YouTubers which cover these subjects very well. So, if you're interested in watching one of these videos, just hover your mouse over the available video and uh, click on and it will take you through. I shall leave that up for about 10 seconds after I disappear. So, that's the Spectrum uh, 128K Plus 2. Thank you very much. I'm going to get the bloody bugger.